moving fluids around in this game can be a little annoying, and ultimately, it has a few problems. As soon as you get to factories of scale whenever you're producing or using a large number of resources as quickly as possible, you'll notice that there are going to start being some issues. The issues that you bump into are things like this. For example, this looks like a pretty standard and yet pretty high end, um, at least for speed purposes, due to the modules and the beacons, uh, an oil refinery that's going to be making all of our types of oil. Um, currently, right now, in this system, we have stored up a bunch of oil and a bit of water, and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add a few of these storage tanks so that we can hold even more stuff and I'm going to empty out what we have. And we're gonna notice a couple of things. So I'm actually going to fluid system contents, empty, empty, empty. So these guys are producing oil incredibly quickly. And normally this would take five seconds. However, they're currently producing at 350% speed or 4.5 X the crafting speed. So these guys are using oil very, very fast. However, you're going to notice a problem and it's already starting to become apparent. You will see that as this system goes, there's actually not enough oil to being pulled through the pipes to work this entire thing. Now, granted, it doesn't seem like it's too big of an issue because only three or four of these guys aren't getting oil and even so occasionally they do. This still showcases a direct problem. The direct problem here is that pipes can only move so many materials per second. So there's this is a direct problem that you're going to end up bumping into when you get to a factory of scale factories of scale by that i mean late game factories that are producing or using hundreds of thousands of materials for example um i'm currently producing and consuming 100 plus thousand crude oil every single minute so it's a very large quantity of stuff is being used and over the course of time you're going to start seeing that of course as this empties because we actually didn't have a ton of storage that we're going to be having less and less of these going. Um, some of that's because we're not actually having enough oil, but even so, you can see that as we get going, more and more of these are slowly fading away, even with crude oil sitting in storage. So that's a problem, right? So effectively, we need a way, as we start to move further and further into the game, to completely bypass this process. What is basically happening here is only a certain amount of stuff can move through a pipe at a given speed. So what we're going to do is we are going to completely and utterly revamp the way that we process and store our oil. And I'll show you exactly how here in just a moment. Let me tear this down. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing in our first step in this process, of course, would be to like say, increase oil production. I might as well connect these up so we get some stuff moving around a bit better. I'll underground these real quick. So we're gonna be storing up some crude oil here. And my logistics, my very fancy logistics robot that has a really big inventory here has a ton of barrels in it. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to, of course, you probably see from the title that this is a robots tutorial. And if you do not know how to use robots, I highly recommend going and checking out my video I posted on it that shows you how to use robots. So you can see this orange square here. This is a logistics network. We're gonna have to make sure that this isn't connected to my current logistics network because then that would kind of ruin this whole experiment or this whole setup. Cause I want this to be its own separate setup for logistics. So what we're gonna do is we actually need a couple of places for these things to charge that do not also um, kind of group up with my other ones. I don't want them to connect my logistics, my big logistics network with this one. So. This is its own little logistics network with a few places for them to charge. What we're gonna do is we have, say, a storage chest with a bunch of barrels in it. All we have to do now is we go to this thing and we tell it that it wants to grab barrels, of course. I'm actually gonna assume you guys have seen my robot tutorial and because of that, I'm gonna assume that you guys know kind of what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down some logistics robots. I'm actually going to go ahead and have this guy request a few more for me and move back into the logistics network so I can get a few more of these guys moving. But we have some other stuff to do before that happens anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. So we'll just have him move right over there. That's fine. So now that our big logistics bot is gone, you'll notice that we are currently filling up these barrels of oil. These barrels of oil can be filled up really, really quickly if you want them to be. 
and this can be really, really useful for a few reasons. So filling up these barrels needs to be done quickly because, well, I mean, we need, we need a lot of oil. Oil is something we're gonna use large quantities of. So theoretically in a factory, you would have barrels being made and barrels will be used. So let's go ahead and start setting up something that will actually consume the barrels that we now have. So I'm going to be building a complete setup for oil refineries. And the big thing about robots is that it makes you, allows you to bypass the restrictions of item movement speeds through belts, through pipes. It does not matter. Robots can bypass it all. And so it allows you to just do a lot more stuff. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do stuff. What we're going to do is we have to place down our original oil refinery machine. We're then going to have to input water and we're going to have to input oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one here and put one here. I'm going to try my best to keep it inside this so it's copy and pasteable. So all we do now is we run a pipe to ground here and we have this set to unfill um, water barrels and this to unfill these uh, oil barrels. We're also going to have to start barreling up some more uh, some water as well. So let's actually go ahead and do that before I forget. So we're gonna give this guy some water barrels. This is of course a closed system, so it's a little awkward to get it all working the way that we exactly need it to, but this will have to do for now. So now we have a system that is producing water barrels and oil barrels, and we are going to come down here. So we're gonna have barrels of water being requested here and barrels of oil being requested here. And this is going to just straight up unload, and this thing, once this thing gets its oil, will start to produce the stuff that we need which is awesome, that's exactly what we want. So then we're gonna have to offload all of this, all these barrels, which is a bit of a pain, but we'll figure it out pretty quick. It's not necessarily too bad. Realistically, if I really want it to, I can just have it output somewhere else and go from there. If we have an extra tile, it's not that big of a deal, but this is how we are going to do it. We're going to have it empty out like this. And these are gonna be emptying into active provider chests. What that means is that it's going to do its best to remove these um, barrels and send them somewhere, anywhere, but here. That is what an active provider does. And now this thing is filled because this thing is full. So now we have to work on the other side. So now we're gonna set up the right side of our little outputter here. So you can do this however you want in whatever way works best for you. However, I'm going to be showing you guys how I am gonna set it up. And you guys can choose to do the same as I do, or you could choose to not. It is entirely your choice. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set up something like this, where this is going to take the petroleum and this is going to take the light oil. And we're going to run the light oil like this. And the reason why we can is because these are undergrounds, so these will not interfere with each other. So now we have something that's going like that. And we're going to place down our third one uh, for heavy oil right here. So now that we have that placed down, we're just gonna go like that. And we're gonna have to go up like that, boom. So now we're going, we're actually doing a pretty good job here because you can tell, or you can see rather, that if we were to say get walls or something, um, we actually have our thing lined up almost perfectly. So we shouldn't, we can, we should be able to copy and paste this without any problems. As you can see that it is indeed within the lines. And to finish up the process, all we have to do is have a place for it to import and export barrels as needed. So there we go. And of course, yeah, you can see that this is staying within the tile parameters, just like that. So now we just put down a requester on each of these to request the barrels that it's gonna need, a passive storage uh, system so that it can do its thing. And we even have the room, actually no, we don't quite have the room for a substation. That'd be, actually we could. We could absolutely have the room for a substation in here, which is awesome. It's actually a pretty good way to do this. I didn't do this on my own with my setup. It may actually be a little bit better than what I was doing. So it's actually kind of exciting that I've just kind of bumped into this solution while I was making this tutorial, so that's kind of cool. So, um, yeah, all we really have to do now is just connect this to power, which we can just kind of, doesn't really matter how, I guess. We just drop it right here, that's fine. Okay, so this thing is going to be requesting barrels. So we're gonna be requesting, say, 10 barrels here, 10 barrels here, and these guys will be getting those. 
we do need to make sure that we actually have them in the logistics network so that these can function. Of course, um, you could just say have a line. If you were to line these up, you could just line up with RoboPorts here. But we'll get to that part right now. We're just going to get to the part where we can actually get this to function, which theoretically it does now. So now we see that we're bringing in barrels of oil and barrels of water, and that is fueling this bad boy. This bad boy is making heavy oil, light oil, and petroleum, which is being put into barrels, which the robots will carry off to use for whatever it is they need to do it to do with it. So this is a completely set up system, and because of the way that we built it, we should just be able to say copy and paste this in a pretty easy way. All we do is go boom, and that should actually set it up. You don't actually have to do anything other than that. So this is the thing that's nice about robots, is that this system is completely put together. There is no other work that needs to be done. It's very compact. And even if, for example, you have a ton of these, and I mean a ton of these put down, as long as you have a place where barrels of water and barrels of oil are made in large quantities, you should never have to worry about how fast fluids can move through pipes because they're not moving through pipes, they're moving through robots carrying barrels of fuel to where they are needed. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. This is actually really neat. I did not actually have it built like this and this is actually pretty good. I wanna compare it to my other system and see if I can't make it any better or worse. Um, and I may show you guys the end product of that or what I am gonna be doing probably to upgrade my thing. I'll see if it has the same number of tiles and whatnot. But this is a completely functioning oil system using robots to actively move the fuel. This bypasses the pipe movement issues with fluids. Um, you can bypass it in other ways, but this is the way that I personally chose to do it. So that's why I made a tutorial on it. I'm gonna compare this to my current setup for oil and I'll show you guys kind of my refined decision because I believe my left side on my current setup is better than this. I'm not sure how this is, but we'll see. All right, so this is the actual setup that I have currently for my um, back end factory side, which you can actually tell this is actually considerably better. Um, and you could also probably work beacons into this if you move this back and use undergrounds and you could probably beacon these up if you want to. Something that I simply chose not to do because I have so many of these that if I really wanted to do that, I would just paste more. It doesn't really matter that much. And you can just drop a substation right there. And theoretically that should power just about everything. All we have to do is connect up. Actually, these are being 100% used. I'd have to find another spot to put the put the power in this area here, but that's okay. This is effectively, um, this turns out it was like two tiles longer than what I'm currently using, but this is actually really clean looking. It looks really good um, and it works pretty well actually. So I'm not worried about that at all. It looks good, it feels good. It's easy to put together for your guys' sake. And actually if I do it like that, it does power everything. So that is absolutely perfect. This is the final product for this tutorial. If you guys want it, you can have it. You can build it exactly the way I have it here. I'll leave my character off. I'm having my character right here so you can kind of take a peek at it and enjoy what you see here. And hopefully this helps. And if it did, leave a like on this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm actually pretty proud of myself to figure that out. That was, that was pretty lucky for me because I had I, I've been working on this for like 45 minutes just trying to get a fucking setup that worked and this worked surprisingly well.